Hey everybody, this is Perch, and I think this video is going to make a bunch of people upset. So that's always fun when you kind of know this going in. Uh, but I did interview uh, with Ron Mars, and, and it's up if you listen to this. It's a good interview. I, I encourage people to listen to it. Uh, again, I'm predicting here um, that, because uh, I, I, it hasn't gone public yet, but I'm predicting that a number of the comments will be the uh, along the lines of, no, I refuse to hear any of this. Uh, he blocked me on Twitter. Uh, you know, I he's part of the mob. There'll, there'll just be some angry kind of stuff in there. I would encourage though people to, um, you know, basically <laughs> it's, it's not healthy no matter where you are, no matter what spectrum you're on, no matter what uh, group or bubble you're in to completely close yourself off from listening to other people. You pick up things, you learn things. It's good. Uh, Mars is a guy who's been in comics for 30 years. You might surprise yourself that there's some things in there that are worth listening to, is worth doing. I will happily do that interview again. I'll interview as many people as I can. It is it is troubling to me that I'm getting an increasing volume of people telling me who I can and can't interview. Like I, if you want to, if you don't want us to attack you, literally, if you want what us to attack you, don't interview these people. It's 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 baffling to me. Sorry. That's very, very weird behavior. That That is not coming from the SJW side either. That's coming from the other group. That's weird. Um, I, You know, again, I, I, I this is comics. I, I find it all very baffling. And for somebody like me, it's very easy to just turn off the switch to go, you know what? This is a headache. I want to have fun conversations like I have in the shop. Uh, apparently, uh, you know, I, I, if I can't stay out of the quote unquote culture war here, and have every you know have people thought police whatever direction I go in, uh, it's not worth having those conversations. I'm not putting up with that. Who would? Nobody in their right mind would. But in that interview, there's something that came out, and I'm 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 wrestling with it a little bit, and you'll hear it kind of go back and forth uh, between the two of us, um, where we're talking about customers, and and this dates back a little bit. Customers or fans? I'll say off the offset, I don't love the term fans when it comes to comics. And I don't like it because fans, if uh, if you're being really picky about it, fans is a shortened word for fanatics. And I don't think it really identifies who the people are very well. I think that fans uh, sounds too casual in a lot of cases. It sound, it, I don't think it encapsulated what's going on. Um, I've, I've tried a couple different terms, audience, uh, readers. I think there's a, there's a bunch of different ways to do it. Ultimately I've gone with customers and I do though it because, you know, it was part of the, the interview I did with uh, Sean Murphy, where we talked about, um, uh, customers and fans. And he said he like he, he transitioned to calling them customers because they were people who, you know, were taking money they had earned and buying his comics. And I think that that made, that makes sense. I mean, you're, there's a transaction taking place. Unfortunately, customers doesn't work uh, for for everything because there's a lot of people who comment on comics um, or who who read the story. Maybe they pirate it, etc. Where there is no financial transaction taking place. This is where we're getting very by way of very picky with words. I acknowledge that. That is exactly what this is all about. So, is customer the appropriate term when you're talking about people say complaining about a book? I mean, one of the obvious questions, you, I'm sorry, but you can't help not to ask, a, ask it, is to say, for example, if you absolutely hate, uh, let's let's pull something out of the air we don't know. Let's say you hate Jason Aaron's Avengers. You hate it. And you go on social media or your blog or YouTube or whatever it happens to be, and you talk about how crappy it is, right? At some point, I think it's reasonable for somebody to ask a question, why are you still buying it? Now, bear in mind, that statement is often a loaded statement. People say it like, like as a counterpoint to an argument or with a lot of heat behind it. So please hear what I'm saying right now. As a comic, as a, as a retailer, as somebody who sells comics, if a customer comes in to my shop, and, and to me, they are customers because they're walking in the door, they're going to spend money. I don't know what exactly. They're not customers of all the comic books simultaneously, but they're customers of comics. That's how I have to view them, and I'm happy to view them that way. That's that's a sane way to view them. But if a customer comes in and, and just complains endlessly about uh, Jason Aaron's Avengers, and just very not not in a I hey, I don't really like this storyline, but in a really angry way, like like the comic is is personally beating them. 
um, I would ask, hey, you know, do you want to drop it from your pull list? I'm not asking that sarcastically. I'm not asking that to shut the person up. I'm, I'm asking that quite literally because, you know, I, I don't think it's healthy if you're a proprietor of a shop and your customer actively, you know, physically, emotionally hate something that is being produced there, I think it's good to get them into something else. I, I think any smart businessman, businesswoman, business person would look at that and go, um, it, it, this, you know, this person's going to self-destruct and then they're going to buy nothing. So let's get them to something they like. Uh, online though, I, I noticed that when you ask the question, if somebody's really complaining about a comic over and over, you're like, are you buying it? The person's like, what do you mean by that? It's like, well, I guess what I mean by that is I hope you're not buying it because you, you hate this book and I hate to see you spend, I hate to see you waste your money. Honestly, it is as simple as that. It's not more complex than that. But again, in a world where, you know, panels get shown around where what, uh, there's YouTubers who read the comics to you online, um, really big YouTubers that do that. I still don't know how they're not getting sued out of, to oblivion, but okay. Um, I, I mean, literally read the entire comic, uh, no commentary is read it to you. Yeah. Okay. Um, where there's uh, pirate sites where you could just go and, and comics are up and you could read them for free. Is somebody who goes and pirates a comic a customer? I mean, technically, no. Not by the definition of, of customer, unless you're, you're saying customer doesn't need to have a financial transaction. But I, I think it kind of does. At least, again, this is my perspective. You may have another one, and that's cool. You can, you can believe whatever you want. But from my perspective, customer entails that money is changing hands one direction to another. And if money isn't changing hands, then I, I don't know what, what, you know, it, what do you, what do you do? What do you do in that case? So if you're a creator, uh, and I go, why did I get into this interview? Cause in the interview, I, I mentioned customer and Mars made the comment, like, I don't really like the word customer for a lot of these people that are coming in and yelling at me. And I, I, my initial reaction was to argue, but, but actually thinking it through, it is a more complicated situation. He described a, a scenario where he uh, he shared a picture of um, Superman with red trunks and said, this is my Superman. A bunch of Zack Snyder fans apparently retweeted it and, and lost their minds. And he, he fought the, the Zack Snyder battle against uh, people for red trunks. And are the Zack Snyder fans who were going at him customers of his books? Uh, probably not probably most of them not. Now, if you want to say potential customers, I mean, I guess, but where exactly do you, uh, this is the whole problem with critique in general, is that if, if uh, you know, if you're a, a person creating something for a company, you're, again, where you going to keep using Jason Aaron, if you're Jason Aaron, you're making Avengers, and Marvel, the company, goes, hey, I'm, I'm happy with you on this book, for whatever reason. They're making, they're selling the comics, they're making money a different way, they're building up trades that they think they can sell later. I mean, who knows? It's their money to, to make or burn, right? And if, if uh, a bunch of people decide that they don't like it and they, they criticize it, but they're not buying the books, how exactly, how, how are we supposed to feel about that? Now, I'll tell you how I feel about it. I would think, hey, uh, I need to listen to this you know, critical feedback and see if there's some changes that could be made because the people who are criticizing, can I turn them from non-customers into customers? That's the thought process I would have. And for the record, that, that clearly isn't the thought process that a lot of people in comics have. And I think there's a lot of reasons for that. I would, again, guess that the biggest reason is most comic creators are, are freelancers to the properties they're on. They don't have any long-term investment into these books beyond an emotional investment. I, I, I still maintain, and I may be wildly wrong about this, but if Marvel, for example, started giving out stock as a bonus, so like if you were a creator, writer, artist, colorist, I mean, whoever, and you contributed to a book's success and the book, uh, you know, lasted a year, if at the end of the year, they're like, hey, you grew sales. Uh, so again, I'll use another name of people I know that, that are irritated. Uh, at sometimes, Al Ewing took the Hulk and created a hit with the Immortal Hulk, along with Joe Bennett. In a in in my world, uh, Disney Marvel should have at the end of the year said, "Hey, Joe Bennett, 
and Al Ewing, here's some stock. Here's some, uh, some, some incentive because you helped grow a property. You put more money in the bank for us. You, uh, you, you, you grew the numbers. So therefore, here is, in addition to the compensation we gave you, here's some stock. Now, I know any, any kind of business financial person can come in here and tell me, you know, if you're an independent contractor and you give them stock, then you're violating certain other rules. And there's, there's like a whole zoo of problems with what I just said financially, however, or legally. Uh, stock options for success, I think, would generate a, tr a transformational behavior within comics. I think if you give creators an incentive to find new customers and grow that book, I think they're going to, you know, react to criticism differently. But today, there is no criticism. There's no incentive beyond just, quote unquote, doing the right thing. But doing the right thing gets, gets really muddled very quickly. If, I, I, again, for me, it's, it's to, for, again, for me, it's obvious. If I took a job, I'm going to do that job to the best of my ability. And if people are coming in and criticizing me, I'd have a pretty high tolerance for absorbing that criticism, which you can see on, quite frankly, the comments on this YouTube channel every day. Um, I, I, I generally let people mouth off as much as they want. Because, you know, first off, there's, it doesn't matter to me one way or another, honestly. And second, you know, I, sometimes people need to get things out of their system and then they, they go from potential customer to customer. Many, many years of working retail and, and running a shop taught me this. Uh, but that's not everybody's bar. And I don't think you could just made, wave a magic wand and say everybody has to behave like this. And I do think the comic publishers incentivize the creators to not, not be this way. And when I say incentivize, like de-incentivize. They, they give them no long-term security or money or, or anything else. And they, so, so again, it's, 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 it's completely up to the individual creator whether they want to invest that effort or not. And for many, the answer is not. Which is different from saying, is it the right thing to do? I, I, this is why this conversation is so difficult one way. I talk, people listen, they get angry, they put in the comments, Hey, Perch is talking about how great the comic creators are. We don't like it, dick. That is how you sound in my head. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, didn't, I don't mean No, I do mean that, actually. Um, it, it is... I, I, I just, I wait for the, uh, what Birch is actually saying here is I, I'm going to start deleting those. I will, I'm just giving fair warning. Uh, when people put words in my mouth, I, I'm like, nope, I'm, I'm done. Because the problem is there are people who come in and, you know, rather than watch the video, they read the comments and then they see people, you know, making pretend quotes of what they heard in the video. And that's, you're being pretty misleading there. So no, that, that, that's not going to survive. But anyway, that's just, I, again, that's my bar. Everybody gets to set their own. Um, I, I'm, I'm torn about this whole, uh, customer's business. Like I said, I don't think the word is perfect, but I also believe, and this is kind of what came out with, with Ron. Um, I believe that if we walk away from that, then I feel like we're feeding the wrong side. I do think the right way to look at, at the audience is to say, these are either customers or they're potential customers. And we should be looking at the work that way. We should be looking at it as somebody we can eventually pull over. Now, of course, that has its limits. If you post a picture of Superman with trunks and somebody in, it comes in to call you a, uh, you know, I, various names and say you're one of the worst people in the world and you hope they'll die, um, then, you know, I, I mean, that, that's not somebody who's going to get converted into a, a, into a customer. It's not worth the effort, honestly, for somebody who's screaming at you. And I, I do think that there is something a little, uh, not broken, but, one of the points that I do find to be disingenuous is when people go on Twitter and they go at a creator and they just yell obscenities at them and then eventually they get blocked. And then the person who was yelling the obscenity is like, oh, so you're blocking a customer. You, you weren't a customer. You were maybe a potential customer, but there has to be some, some point where if you're a big enough dick, uh, you know, you, you, Sorry, you do some, nobody has to put up with you being a dick. But again, that's a very slippery slope. What constitutes being a dick? I think that, uh, you know, I, to me, again, and this is maybe working retail, I think about what I would have tolerated from a customer. If a customer comes in saying, I don't like your shop, I mean, okay, am I going to throw them out? No. If they come and say, I don't like these comics, okay. I had people come in a lot in the 90s who say, 
you're selling Satan material. You're selling uh, material that goes against God. In many cases, I remember Lady Death and Evil Ernie were books that, bam, people found out those, I was selling those, and it was like I was, I was corrupting the youth. Um, I, you know, I didn't throw those people out of the store. I was very clear those people aren't customers. I'm not going to be able to convince them to buy Evil Ernie. I'm not going to convince them to buy anything at that shop. If they're coming in believing that I'm, you know, leading kids down a path to Satan, then that, that's not going to be a customer. Um, but what do you, but, but again, I, I don't, I don't kick them out. However, if somebody comes into the shop and starts shouting, you know, the N word, which one guy did, you know, and, and just making everybody else in the shop, you know, fearful and uncomfortable. Yeah. I kick that guy out. Somebody comes in and steals something in the store or, you know, it goes over and like grabs a comic and, and throws it at the wall. I've had that happen too. I had somebody come in like, this comic is trash. Picked up the comic and threw it, damaging the property. I kicked that person out. Should I have not? I mean, what if the person I kicked out for uh, throwing a comic against the wall is like, you're throwing out a customer. I mean, No. There, there are limits, I guess, is my point. Again, the challenge there is what those limits are, are very tough to, they're tough to nail down. And I do absolutely believe that there are creators who have made those limits like, like a hair trigger, um, unreasonable. I, I think that, uh, you know, I think Tom King has blocked people and used bots um, unfairly. I think he's like, Somebody's like, I don't really like what you did with Supergirl. Block. Like, if a person was being very polite. I don't, again, it's his, it's his account. And I think he is turning off a potential customer for sure. I think people who use block bots turn off tons of potential customers and actual customers because they're, they're, they don't even know who they're blocking. But this is a, this is a hard one. So I'm, I'm hoping for some engagement. I'm hoping that many of you can come in and give your thoughts in the comments and, and where you see this line and where you see it all fit. I'm hoping that uh, people just don't fixate on the Perch says read Perch says creators can do whatever they want. I, I'm hoping that that's that, that we can steer away from some of that. But honestly, I think this is t I don't think this is an easy answer. So I'm curious to see what you think. So leave a comment below. Let me know your thoughts. And um, yeah, I mean this this is this is this deserves decent conversation. Thanks for listening.